And hello, everyone. I'm Kira Phillips. And I'm Terry Moran. We've got some breaking news. The jury in the Jonathan Majors domestic violence trial has found him guilty of one count of assault and one count of harassment, but acquitted him of another count of assaulting his former girlfriend. This comes after jurors spent four or five hours deliberating over portions of several days. And this is a case that has gotten a lot of attention. Jonathan Majors, a major rising star. Uh, and he, he met you know, a crisis in this, and the jury has now returned with its verdict. And there was a lot of talk about this uh, trial impacting his future in the movie business. Rising star within the Marvel movies. Uh, our legal contributor, Brian Buckmeyer, has been following uh, this from the very beginning as well. So I guess let's first of all talk about the charges here, uh, Brian, your first reaction. Yeah, I'm actually kind of scratching my head just because I'm looking at the different charges and, and let me break it down and explain. There are two different assaults here. One is intentional assault and one is reckless assault. Uh, based on the number order that they're telling us, my guess, and, and please someone correct me if I'm wrong, is they're acquitting him of intentional assault but finding him guilty of reckless assault, meaning that he just did something he should have known um, better and it, it caused the injury of Grace Jabari. Then he's found not guilty of aggravated assault, which is to alarm, annoy, harass, or threaten someone and subject them to physical violence. Uh, but he's not guilty of that, but he is guilty of alarming and annoying uh, Grace Jabari. To me, this sounds like a, we call it a King Solomon decision. It's like they literally just split the baby and said half and half, but some of the convictions and some of the acquittals don't really make sense when you put them all together. Well, Brian, let, let, me, let me try to make a little sense. I wonder, I don't know the exact fact pattern since I wasn't in the courtroom, but couldn't you say that in, in the fury of what is a domestic dispute, he was reckless in his handling, in his, uh, his physical handling of, uh, of uh, Jabari, and that was, uh, that was the reckless assault. And the harassment is he lost his temper rather than consciously went after went after her. Does that make sense? No, because it would make sense for the reckless and then the aggravated harassment, because the aggravated harassment is harassing someone through physical violence. So why find him guilty of assaulting recklessly, but not guilty of harassing someone through physical force? That's that's the part that I'm thinking someone just kind of said, you know what, right. we'll find him guilty for two, but not guilty for these two. But it, it, it could work. It, the, someone's got to talk to the jury, I guess. Yeah. Let's talk about the, the evidence, um, because there was clearly a clashing narrative from both sides. Uh, we had video, audio, text, photos. Do we have that uh, uh, video? Okay, this is um, some of the photos that we had here of, of the, the bruises and the cuts. This is the video that I'm talking about. I mean, this was probably one of the most powerful pieces of the evidence that they played in court, Brian. Absolutely. And, and I was in court watching some of this video being played to the jury, and I think it was difficult for both the uh, prosecution and the defense to really articulate this video in a way that really moved the jury. And I think ultimately the jury kind of took this case into their own hands. We saw that from the jury notes saying we want all of the evidence, pretty much video, testimony, 911 calls, and they decided for themselves. For me, is this Jonathan Majors assaulting his then girlfriend, then running away, or is this him trying to stop her from stealing, or I guess re-stealing his cell phone and getting away from her? Uh, the the juxtaposition of how this was presented to the jury, I think, is what caused uh, the deliberation to take so long. And there's a is there, there's a state of mind, obviously, that the that the prosecution would have to prove, right? And so here they are. She has seen the the spark that triggered this fight was she saw what she thought was a message from another woman on his phone. So she was trying to grab the phone, he's trying to grab it back there, probably at the, at the peak of emotions and anger and, and mutual conflict at that point. And I, is, would the jury have factored that in? In other words, we've all been in fights with people we love, and so it's not the same as a as a as a self as a more conscious <laughs> as Brian conscious smiles. He's like, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's <laughs> so this this is the difficult part for me, and this is where I was getting in trouble at home when I tried to break this down to my wife. Um, what I didn't like about this defense is they didn't focus on what is called Penal Law 3525. It's the ability to use force to stop a larceny or theft or criminal mischief, the damage of your property. And I always go back to this analogy that I've said multiple times in ABC. If, and I'll use Kira, use an example. If Kira's walking down the street and someone takes her purse, the law says, 
you're allowed to use force to take your property back. The law doesn't say, well, your girlfriend's allowed to take your cell phone because she's allowed to check for infidelity. The law doesn't say, well, my wife's allowed, uh, to, or I'm allowed to take my wife's property because I need to check it for this or that. No, to me, this broke down to Grace Jabari stealing property and Jonathan Majors using force, now the question is, is it appropriate force, to take back his property? But that seemed to be an argument that was missed completely in this trial. I'm not sure quite why. Uh, for the most part, they really focused on, can you believe that these injuries actually occurred in that vehicle when Grace Jabari then went off drinking with these new friends that she saw, that she supposedly bumped into a wall, supposedly bounced her head off of the DJ booth, was smoking with a cigarette, was her finger really broken, was her ear really scratched? That's where this case really focused. It didn't focus on is any person justified of using force to take back their property. So Majors didn't testify in his own defense, right? That's correct. He did not testify did, in this case. So, so do you think that helped or hurt him? I, I, hindsight's always twenty twenty. So you look at it now and you're like, maybe it hurt him. I, I mm -hmm. think the difficulty in him testifying was that the evidence that came in was so strong that for lack of a better term, this was a toxic relationship. This was a man who believed he was, as his own words, a great man, and that he needed a great woman similar to like that of Michelle Obama or Coretta Scott King, and through the prosecution's eyes or their lens was manipulating Grace Jabari to be um, someone else through verbal and emotional abuse, and that this crescendo of verbal and emotional abuse led to the physical abuse that is this case. And if Jonathan Majors took the stand, he would have had to answer for each and every one of those instances of verbal and emotional abuse. And I think that would have been very damning for him, not just in a criminal setting, but also in a, in a PR setting, because he's got to have a life after this. So I think strategically it makes sense for him not to testify, but I think on another sense, him testifying to what happened in that vehicle saying, I was just trying to get my phone back. This was not a form of manipulation. This wasn't a form of abuse. This was someone took my property and I tried to take it back with as little force or as little harm as possible and she wasn't injured when I left. I think that could have been helpful as well. All right, let's go to Aaron Katursky, who's been covering this for us. Th thank you, Brian, our senior investigative reporter. So, uh, Aaron, this is a split verdict. Brian's just been slicing and dicing the law with us and, and some of the evidence in the case. What do you make of this verdict? What's the jury saying? And what are the consequences for Jonathan Majors? I think off the bat, with two counts of conviction, Jonathan Majors faces uh, as as much as a year in, in prison, although uh, hard-pressed to find another case of, of misdemeanor domestic violence where a first-time offender actually served time. But be that as it may, uh, it, he does face the possibility of a year in prison on each of the two uh, counts of, of conviction. Terry, I think the verdict reflects a, a signal from the jury that they did not believe Jonathan Majors intentionally assaulted Grace Jabari in the back seat of that SUV back in March, but was reckless uh, when when he tried to, to grab back his phone and and left her with a lacerated ear and a fractured finger, uh, because on both counts that involved intentional conduct, the jury acquitted him. On the counts uh, where it was just reckless assault, he was convicted. And then the jury saw video uh, of the alleged harassment outside the SUV where where. Majors is seen hoisting Jabari off the ground and shoving her back into the SUV. Uh, that, that was pretty cut and dry, it seemed, to the jury, and so they convicted him on, on the single misdemeanor count of harassment. So what's the, the talk, Ben, Aaron, just about his future and his career and how that's playing into all of this? I mean, the, uh, a lot of uh, the coverage has been about how he was this rising star within Marvel yeah. and that this case um, could devastate his, his future. Well, he was a rising star within Marvel, wasn't he? And, you know, with roles in, in, in Loki and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, which is where he met Grace Jabari on set. She was doing a dance instruction for some of the, the cast members. And, and a lot of his projects have been put on hold pending the outcome of the case. But regardless, and, and you know, he can try to fight the two counts of conviction. Uh, but regardless, there were some things that came out during trial which were not a good look for his reputation. The jury heard, and Majors does not dispute, that you know, Majors was 
throwing things at Grace Jabari on several occasions, threw a candle at her head, the, the, the candle container smashed, the jury saw pictures of it. Uh, there were clearly instances of, of verbal and emotional abuse where he's imploring her not to come home drunk because uh, he's a great man. He needs a great woman to support him and and uh, implores her to behave more like Coretta Scott King or, or Michelle Obama, implicitly comparing himself to the husbands of, of those two women. Uh, and And there were other instances where he tells her, and the jury saw surveillance images of this, to, to button up her blouse. Uh, he thought her, her, her blouse was unbuttoned too much as they were going out on the, the night, March 25th, uh, earlier this year when the, the, the assault occurred. So there, there, there were things that weren't great for majors that, that came out. Now, whether he can overcome that, you know, Kira, Terry, you guys know Hollywood sometimes has short memories. Hmm. Well, although since really the Me Too movement, it is hard uh, for someone to come back from these mm -hmm. kinds of allegations without a great journey of reconciliation with mm -hmm. all, uh, himself first, and, perhaps. And, and, Terry, I think that what you just said seems to reflect a, a reason that the Manhattan District Attorney decided to bring this case in the first place, um, because prosecutors seem to believe that you know, it, it doesn't have to just be Harvey Weinstein or, or, or conduct that reaches that level. Um, and, and in fact, I think prosecutors are coming to, to a belief that women are enduring all sorts of other kinds of domestic violence that don't necessarily rise to felony conduct under the law, uh, but may deserve uh, a look from prosecutors nonetheless. Uh, it, I can't think of another misdemeanor assault case that's ever gone to trial in, in the last 20 years here, Terry. But, but the Manhattan DA's office was determined to bring the case, knowing that the, it was an imperfect set of facts. And, and I think the split verdict uh, reflects that. But knowing it was an imperfect set of facts, they moved ahead anyway because they, they wanted to send, I, I think, a bit of a message that, that the conduct uh, women often endure in relationships, uh, even if it isn't as serious as something like a Harvey Weinstein, nonetheless uh, deserves a day in court. It's fascinating. Yeah, point well made. Overall, uh, not a real healthy relationship when you learned a lot of the facts and the back and forth and just the ma manipulation and all mm -hmm. of that. So, mm -hmm. Brian, Aaron, thank you both so much. And sentencing for Jonathan Majors is currently set for February 6th, 2024.